Today we have brought you the latest Tesla news. Tesla to pay $10.5 million for 1% negligence in 2018 Model S crash. Tesla's Fremont factory produces its 2 millionth car. Tesla HVAC system still on the future products list, says Elon Musk. And, Tesla V4 supercharger design confirmed. Let's get into all the details. So let's get started. On Monday, July 19, a Fort Lauderdale federal jury released its verdict about a 2018 Tesla Model S crash, resulting in 18-year-old Barrett Riley's death. The jury found Tesla 1% negligent for the Model S accident and ruled that the victim and his father were 99% at fault. The six-person jury found that Barrett was 90% to blame for the crash, while his father James Riley was 9% liable. Barrett's mother Jenny Riley was found 0% responsible for the incident. As per Bloomberg, the jury also ruled that James and Jenny Riley sustained $10.5 million in pain and suffering damages for their son's death. On May 8, 2018, the 18-year-old drove his father's Model S with his friends. Riley lost control of the vehicle while driving at 116 miles per hour. The Model S hit the concrete wall of a house in Fort Lauderdale and caught on fire. Riley and one of his passengers, Edgar, died in the incident, while a third survived the crash. James Riley filed a product liability suit against Tesla in a Florida federal court in 2020. In his complaint, Riley claims that the Model S vehicle's lithium-ion batteries burst into an uncontrollable and fatal fire after his son crashed. The Riley family argued that Barrett might have survived the accident if the Model S hadn't caught on fire because of a defective Tesla battery design. On June 29, a judge dismissed the Riley's claim about a defect in Tesla's lithium-ion battery cells and battery pack before the trial started. Barrett's family also noted that Tesla removed the speed-limiting device Jenny Riley requested for the Model S, designed to cap the vehicle's speed at 85 miles per hour. However, Tesla's lawyers argued that the teenager told the company's service center staff to remove the speed limiter on the Model S sedan. A testimony from one of Barrett's friends revealed that the 18-year-old tricked a Tesla technician into deactivating the limiter. A driver makes the car safe, the speed limiter does not, Tesla's lawyers told the Florida jurors. Elon Musk reached out to James Riley a few days after his son's death. The father of seven, asked Musk to acknowledge that the death of his son and his friend led to the enhanced safety of others. Following Riley's request, Tesla updated its release notes for speed limit mode with a dedication, saying, in memory of Barrett Riley. Who do you think is responsible for this incident? Share your thoughts in the comments. Moving to the next update, Tesla's Fremont factory produces its 2 millionth car, Tesla's Fremont factory in Northern California has produced its 2 millionth car, a red multi-coat Model 3 performance. The Fremont factory was once Tesla's main manufacturing plant and could still be considered that today, as it produces all four electric models and was the automaker's initial production facility in the United States. Since Tesla moved its headquarters from nearby Palo Alto to Austin, Texas, late last year, the Fremont factory has continued to be one of the automaker's most crucial facilities and may even be the subject of a future expansion project. However, despite Tesla's newfound love for Texas, Fremont is still a very important part of Tesla's manufacturing prowess. Recently, the factory built its 2 millionth vehicle, according to one employee at the plant. A red multi-coat Model 3 rolled off of Fremont's production lines on Monday, becoming the 2 millionth car that Tesla has built at the plant since assuming ownership of the facility in 2010. Tesla employees at the plant also received a small card to commemorate their hard work as the Fremont factory has reached this incredible accomplishment. In March 2020, Tesla built its 1 millionth vehicle, a red Model Y performance. This was not the one millionth vehicle to roll out of Fremont, but, in fact, Tesla's millionth unit produced in its history. Of course, since 2020, 
Tesla has opened two new factories, increased manufacturing output at both Fremont and Shanghai with expansion projects, and increased its quarterly delivery rate from Q1 2020 by nearly three times. Q2 2022's 254,695 deliveries are 2.88 times what Tesla delivered in Q1 2020 when it delivered its one millionth vehicle as a company. This accomplishment, however, is a real tip of the cap to Tesla and the entire team at Fremont. While the site lacks the necessary space for the world's most valuable automaker, as Tesla has grown considerably over the past five years, it continues to manufacture units well above what is typical for its normal production capacity. Fremont has an annual production capacity of 600,000 vehicles, but production was running at as much as 20% over that figure in Q2 to make up for lost units in Shanghai due to a manufacturing shutdown. Moving to the next update, Tesla HVAC system still on the future products list, says Elon Musk. Talk about a Tesla HVAC system hasn't come up for quite a while, but Elon Musk recently confirmed that it is still on the future products list. On Monday, Tesla shareholder Owen Sparks asked Elon Musk to make a home HVAC with HEPA filter to help with allergies. The Tesla CEO replied to Sparks, commenting that an HVAC system is especially important in places like Austin, which have next-level amounts of pollen in the air. In a 2020 earnings call, Elon Musk elaborated on Tesla's plan to enter the residential or commercial HVAC market. He expressed excitement about developing an HVAC system with hospital-grade particle filtration. Musk pointed out that Tesla already achieved such a system in its Model S and Model X cars. Tesla chief financial officer Zachary Kirkhorn added that the Model 3 and Model Y vehicles have MERV 16 or 15 capable filtration. So taking all those things that we've learned and applying it to how may HVAC would be and commercial HVAC would be just very exciting. And then if you're condensing water, like why not also have a few water source? If you have water, you possibly could then heat the water and have a water heater as well," concluded Elon Musk. In late Q4 2021, Musk hinted at Tesla, developing an HVAC, energy storage, solar, and hot water package for homeowners. Lars Moravi, the VP of Vehicle Engineering at Tesla, noted that integrating those systems in a house is not different from doing it in a vehicle. And senior VP of Powertrain and Energy Engineering, Drew Buglino, pointed out that integrating those systems in a car is more complicated. Currently, the company is working on many projects, including the Cybertruck, Semi, Roadster, and Optimus. Plus, Tesla is still ramping production in Giga Berlin and Giga Texas. Meanwhile, Tesla Energy is working on filling Megapack orders and the new Megapack factory. It is unknown when Tesla will officially unveil an HVAC system. Moving to the last update, Tesla V4 Supercharger design confirmed. Tesla has revealed the design of their next-generation V4 Supercharger in architectural drawings for a new station in Danvers, Massachusetts. Last week, we reported on the design of the V4 Supercharger, revealing that it would look almost exactly like the megachargers for the Tesla Semi that we have already seen installed in two locations. Recently, a Twitter user discovered plans for the Danvers Supercharger station, which include drawings of a V4 pedestal, confirming the design and other details included in our report. As you can see from the plans, the V4 Supercharger cabinet will be taller, slimmer, and as a result have a smaller footprint compared to the V3 Supercharger. Since there is no interior opening, the charging cable starts from the outside, at the top of the cabinet, translating into a longer cable. This should prove helpful if Tesla includes any V4 stations when they open up their supercharger network to other EV drivers, although they will have to come up with a different design for their magic dock. When compared to the Mega Charger, there are almost no visual differences. As we pointed out last week, the biggest difference is the overall size, as well as the location of where the cable handle docks. According to the plans, the V4 supercharger stands 6 feet 4 1 4 inches tall, compared to the V3 at 5 feet 6 1 4 inches tall. 
The Mega Charger is even taller, at just under 7 feet. With the Mega Charger, the handle docks quite low, whereas with the V4 Supercharger, it docks near the middle of the cabinet. The plans explain that the center of the V4 handle sits at most 48 inches off the ground. Unfortunately, the plans do not include any details about what is inside the V4 cabinet and what charging speeds they will provide. Tesla is expected to unlock additional speed in the V3 superchargers later this year, bumping them from 250 kilowatt to 324 kilowatt. Based on that, we expect the V4 superchargers to provide at least 350 kilowatt, matching hints given by former Tesla executive Jerome Gillen during the company's Q3 2020 earnings call. While the plans include design details about the V4 superchargers, it is not clear if this particular site in Massachusetts will actually include them. Previous rumors suggest the first V4 superchargers will be installed in Austin, which would make sense, as Tesla would want the first installation to be close to Giga Texas and their new headquarters. That's it for now. So what are your thoughts about this? Let us know in the comments. Stay tuned at the Electric Arena for all the latest Tesla and electric vehicle news.